My name is Era, and I'm the host of the Tamil Creator Podcast. I chat with creators from all over the world to share their stories and discuss hot topics in a way that I hope inspires, educates, and entertains you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Tamil Creator. I'm your host, Era. Today, I'm going to be chatting with what would be my dream job, but I'm not nowhere as good as him in terms of this sport, but Gokul Nadesan. Nathan and he is a professional basketball player. Um, he's you know played in several leagues internationally. The man also did computer science, so he satisfied what his parents probably wanted while playing basketball. So I admire I admire that. Uh, Goko, uh, welcome to the uh, podcast. Thanks for jumping on. No, thank you for having me. Excited to talk with you today. <laughs> yeah, and for those of you, his name might be familiar. His story was. Featured in a written article on TamilCulture.com like probably like a year ago. But, uh, you know, conversations are always a bit more fun than written. So, Gokul, for me, I always like to start at the beginning. Why don't you tell us a bit about your childhood, how you grew up, and how you managed to convince your parents to be okay with you playing professional basketball, even though you're good. Uh, it's even <laughs> better that you somehow convince them that, uh, you know, you could play professional basketball. So, tell me about that. Um, so, I grew up in the Bay Area in like, specifically in like the San Jose area, um, born and raised, um, really started, I really started playing basketball since like a really young age, probably since I was like five is when I started playing in like a local like YMCA league, but like I had a ball in my hand, like since, since I ever since like I could remember anything. So I always was like attached to basketball and like, thankfully, like my parents always like encouraged me to go with basketball and like let me do like pretty much any other extracurricular activity I wanted like there was no like convincing them that I that I like had to play basketball when I was growing up playing in like school or like travel ball or anything like that so that was great um so I played high school and then I got a scholarship and played four years at a small engineering school in Colorado Colorado School of Mines and um like you said, like I studied computer science over there and uh, I had a good, like great experience, had a great basketball career. Everything went really well over there. And then like, I was fortunate enough that I like played well enough in college that like, I was able to like play professionally abroad and get like some interest from teens and stuff coming out of college. And so like, there wasn't really any convincing my parents that I, that I like, had to go play professional basketball, which I'm like super like thankful for and grateful because like I understand that, you know, I think not a lot of kids or, or you know, Tamil, Tamil people like in, in different fields outside of like what's traditional for us is like they are allowed to pursue those sort of things. So I'm, I'm obviously very like appreciative of that. But yeah, like I've been playing professional basketball for like the past five years. So it's been, it's been a good cool fun journey do you have any siblings i do i have a i have a sister she is a doctor she's a pediatrician and she's she wants she's doing a fellowship in like emergency pediatrics so you know she she's going forward with it so that's one of the two of us that's going on the path to make the parents happy (laughs) is she athletic in any way out of curiosity or your parents Um, are like are they athletic as well well, I think so. Actually, my dad actually played basketball, like in India, in in uh, Salem, in the Salem area in Tamil Nadu. But um, like, I think basketball in India in the seventies was a little different from basketball in the states. But he did play. My dad was a six foot center. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I think maybe that's how he just like you know, was able to like be really supportive and all that stuff was because he played and so he likes basketball naturally. But like my mom did a little bit of sports like in school and stuff. And my sister did, she did, she was like a dancer. So she still is a dancer. So, I mean, some, there are some sort of like active exercise genes, athletic, if you want to say it is, but yeah, it's, I mean, my, I think my parents is like, my dad's specifically his sports background helped helped I guess with me <laughs> I'm only curious because I'm a parent now I have twins and um my parents never encouraged us to play sports 
I think it's because it just they weren't exposed, but like I would love for my kids to play sports. I talked to you probably know her, she's in the Bay Area as well. Shana Meta. Uh she's no, half Tamil. I, I, she's I, half Tamil. I don't I don't know her personally, but I do know of her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So like same thing. I was just curious and like her dad, I think, was a huge Warriors fan. So he always loved basketball. So he would that's why he was also like I think she went to Brown. So again. I think doing the doctor thing while playing basketball. So you with comp sci and basketball. And I think I talked to somebody who's from Canada. She's like an elite volleyball player. Like she was a number one recruit in like Canada. She plays pro in like um, the US. Same thing, her dad is super athletic. Her mom is athletic. So that's the secret. You gotta have parents that played the sport. So now I know. Uh, that's why I was asking, I'm just curious about it. And like, I guess growing up in the Bay Area as well, were you out of curiosity, were you like, I'm assuming you're a Warriors fan. Yeah, yeah, I, I grew up a big, big Warriors fan. Um, it's funny though; I'm not even the biggest Warriors fan in my house. Probably my sister gets that title. Oh, wow, like, okay. yeah, yeah, like huge. It's funny, like growing up, like my whole family was. We were all big basketball fans, though. Like, even though my sister and mom never like played, like we all loved watching basketball. I think part of it was because for them was because like I was playing, but like they like my sister goes and watches w- way more warrior games than I do like oh, that's, that's yeah. awesome man I'm so jealous. It's, it's, <laughs> it's cool but yeah I'm, I'm a big Warriors fan so it was so good to win. it's a great it's a it's a good summer you know it's a good summer didn't yeah, expect I mean, it it was but it was it was great it was great I mean I guess are you this a was a good fan are you Sorry? Raptors fan? You're Raptors oh yeah I was gonna fan. say I mean you're you had a good summer I think in 2019 I had a great summer that was like that was obviously awesome um like i think probably one of the best parades just because it was disorganized so it was like chaos and pandemonium (laughs) it was like i don't know if you've seen like the pictures but it was crazy like oh i have i did i saw the pictures of that it was it was ridiculous but like it was amazing though yeah like i mean first championship first championship for the raptors yeah that that that's that's the the first one's like that's the craziest one the first parade i I know for you it's not a big deal you guys have had like four (laughs) four of these now in the last like whatever a little bit but for us, man, we've been waiting for that. And, <laughs> and like the shot, like I have a t-shirt of the shot, like redeeming Vince Carter's friggin' trip before game seven. Like uh, just so many ma- amazing things about that year. Yeah. So like, I'm inter- like, you know, on the professional basketball side, how does all this work? Like, I mean, you had a, a great uh, career in college. Um, and then, you know, you played internationally, several leagues, you play in like tournaments, et cetera. Um, how do you, know about these opportunities i assume you know there's like a network or like people that kind of help you find these opportunities or do you find them yourself super curious about that yeah so like this episode is sponsored by nobody that's right nobody so if you could be kind enough to hit that subscribe button that would mean a lot to me usually what happens is like you go through an agent and so like you know if you like usually when you, if you like play well enough in college or, you know, or if you just go to like a big name school and, and, and play somewhat, you know, and, and you do decent, um, you'll kind of have like agents that are, that will be interested in representing you. And like, based on the agent you decide to sign with, they are, are connected in certain, like certain markets across the world. You just have to do your research and like see like okay what interests you like who which agent do you think will be like the right fit and um where are you like trying to play so i think all of that sort of factors into like all those factors come into play and it's just like yeah so really it's really an agent who will who will help you out get like your deals and stuff like that and like which parts of the world have you played in because you've been doing it for like five years you said yeah so what parts of the world have you been to and What's been your favorite experience so far? Um, I've been to Australia. I've been to Ukraine, Finland. I was in Finland for like two stints. And then I was also in Uruguay. And then COVID actually made things crazy. But yes, I was in those, those, those countries. And what was your favorite experience? Um, I think every experience was different, was really different. I mean, like, like if you look at like like obviously it's nice to be in warmer countries right with better weather <laughs> like Australia and Uruguay I was like on, I was literally like on the beach which was cool but like I think like 
like even even in Finland, like the people are are very like warm and welcoming, and so that makes it like really cool and like everyone like is everyone understands English, so you can communicate with people. Like Finland was a really cool spot, so I think each spot kind of has its own unique uniqueness to it, and um, it kind of depends. But overall, it's it's all been it's all been pretty good. There are good things to say about those those situations. And when you pick like a, a league to play in, do you play in like, is it like one calendar year or is it like a league for three, four months? Like how, do, how does that work? Well, it kind of depends actually. So like depends on the league. So like there are some leagues that use that run during like our summertime, you know, and if you want to play a full year round, you, you could, but like typically like the main leagues go during like, like October to maybe like, april but like give or take a few like one month or something but like it's typically the normal basketball season that you see like in north america so um you can really play wherever you want like or whenever you want if you really want to like what depending on like the time of the year but there's always like the normal basketball season where like the main leagues occur and you know when you're playing on these teams you know like you said you played in different countries assuming different teams even though you've been to Finland twice, but maybe it was a different experience each time. How do you acclimate or like try to fit into a team um, that, you know, you're, you're kind of joining as this like, I don't know if it's a free agent, but like you're, you're brought in, there might be like an established kind of hierarchy of who's who, who's the star, who's, you know, who's this or who that, like all the defined roles. So how do you figure out that process of fitting in so that obviously you can succeed on an individual level, but, you know, fit in on the team as well? Yeah, I think there's a huge, like, yeah, like a, a chemistry question mark, right? Like, you know, you're coming into this situation, sometimes even like your teammates don't really speak English, potentially. And so like, how are you going to gel with them, fit in? Um, it usually helps to like, really like communicate the best way you can and like, be active, like while you're practicing and like, trying to understand like tendencies and things like that. And it's really just like getting in a lot of reps, I think, when practicing and like knowing that you need to still like do what you do, but find a way to get your teammates going. So finding a balance between the two of those, I think is <clears throat> probably the most important thing when we're talking about like chemistry and fitting in if, if I was to go to a, like a situation with like an established uh, group of players. And like when you are playing on teams, especially if language is a barrier, What's it like socially, like, you know, when you're on a team, like you're playing in rec or like you're playing in university or college, sorry, you know, you, you typically kind of are friends or hang out. Um, but is it like that when you're on the road? Like, do you guys hang out in the evening? Do you guys go to bars or just, you know, just hang out just to get to know each other? Or is it business, essentially? Um, well, I would definitely say it's like, it's a lot more business-like than what college was, you know, mm -hmm. because like college, you'll, you'll see guys at class and things like that. And with professional basketball, like some guys have families, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't, they they don't, aren't really able to like hang out outside of your practices or get in games and stuff. So it's definitely different, but I still do try to like hang out with like definitely like the other Americans on the team or something like that. You, there's definitely time to do those sort of things like team camaraderie wise and stuff, but it's not as like it's not the way college was where you're always it feels like you're always just like with your team is there anything about because it sounds amazing obviously playing professional basketball traveling the world getting paid to do it um, is there something that you didn't anticipate about making that transition to playing professionally and being away from home yeah a few things um First of all, I think there's a lot there, like, although you still try to do stuff with your teammates, like I said previously, there's like a lot more isolation, you know, and they're, like you're, 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 you're isolated from a lot of things. Like you have your whole, your family back home and all your friends and everyone's back home and you're in this, you know, other country. And like, especially when it's with it, if you're in like a European country where it's like freezing cold, you don't go out that much. You know, sometimes like this, like it's just cold and, you know, it's, it gets dark early. So like the isolation is definitely a factor. I would say like, sometimes I'm in my, I'm, I'm at practice and then I come, you know, straight back to, to, to my, to my, to my house. And so it's just like, 
there's not that much in between of like things to do or anything. So I would say the isolation and it w- was different. And that was, that was probably the main thing is like adjusting to that, which wasn't like too bad for me because I was kind of fine with, you know, just like resting my body and things like that. So, but it's definitely, definitely like a change and something that, that threw me off guard a little bit at the beginning. And when you're in these places like Finland, Uruguay, Australia, you're playing these games against other, other teams. How do you guys travel in between? Is it like a coach bus? Do you guys fly, train? And does that travel affect you physically? Um, so it, it really depends on like the league or whatever you're in. Um, usually like, like, so like in Finland, there's like the road trips are actually not very long. Like the longest trip you might have would be like five hours, but like that's, that's like the longest. So there's like nothing shorter like there's nothing longer than that and most of the trips are like two to three hours um but when i was in uruguay pretty much every team was in the capital montevideo so like going to a, a game would be like 10 minutes for a technic for an away game it was just everything was pretty much in the capital but um i i do think that like on some of the some of the longer trips i've been on it is like it kind of sucks about like your body's like tired and stuff like you don't really you have to kind of you have to get a really good warm up in definitely because you're you're sitting in a, in a bus for hours or you know and you you just have to get ready to go play you got to be ready when when the game starts got it and you play a shooting guard small forward yeah shooting guard shooting guard yeah i saw your shot in terms of um, your skill as a basketball player i think shooting is something that kind of you highlight in or at least is highlighted about you is there something that you know you want to work on to kind of take your game to the next level i saw that i think you were doing a workout with uh jordan Poole recently uh, he came he came oh, to, he came to he, our, came. he came to our like playing session oh, nice, we, nice. we were playing fives yeah um that was cool that was really cool obviously um but yeah uh like that, yeah like shooting I guess is what I what I'm like my best skill but there's so many things on things I'm trying to work on I guess always every summer like just little things little details past few years I've really added to like playing off a of pick and roll like certain things of like um I've always liked coming off off screens so that's that's been something that was like always a strength of mine but then like adding more of like uh, a few isolation moves in certain situations creating space with like a step back or a side step, like a go-to move. So things like that. Also a lot of things that are like, so, so like detailed on the basketball court, just like thinking about like the angles I use, uh, getting leverage. And like, also a big thing for me was like translating like certain basketball movements to like the weight room so that I'm strong in like basketball positions, like common positions. I'll like or movement patterns I'll, I'll execute on the basketball court. Like I need to be strong and have stability in those positions. So I think a big thing for me every summer was like, how do I get my uh, weight room workouts to be better and like, and, and more specific to what I do on the court. Do you have help in any way in the sense of like coaching from a basketball coach perspective or even like nutrition, like weight room? Like, do you get any support that way? Yeah, I, I have a few like, trainers basketball trainers and then like strength and conditioning trainers that I'll I'll go to that are out here in the bay area uh, like I know and um I'm very comfortable with them so I'll like go to them like I've worked with quite a few basketball trainers in the bay area so like I'm I know a good amount of the people out here that train so it's been it's been like a lot of people helping me out so it's it's nice um, as a you know fellow ba- big basketball fan, you know I'd love to see. I mean, there's been one or two South Asians play in the like NBA. Why do you think it hasn't happened yet in terms of like not uh, like a regular like a I guess a rotation player uh, in either league, in the WNBA or NBA? And you know, uh, do you think that's a possibility in the future? Did you know that every time you left a five out of five review for this podcast? A Tamil parent lets their child pursue a career in the creative arts? Okay, that's probably not true, but if there's a chance that it is, do you really want to jinx it? Leave a review. Do it for the young creative in you. Um, yeah, I think it'd definitely be a possibility in the future. I mean, 
like obviously basketball is like starting to take off amongst our community you know and I think that as it does it'll just sort of happen like inevitably like it will happen I think and it's just like a matter of time but it's just more of like inclusion in the sport like actively pushing boys and girls not even pushing but encouraging them to like pursue basketball if if that's their if that's their thing do you have any advice for the younger generation like you know that next group of um you know potential basketball stars that want to be professional basketball players like things they should think about or you know just a general advice man i would say if they're for young kids it's just right now enjoy the game and, and try to work as hard as you can but remember to have fun because you know this is the stage where you're supposed to be like enjoying it it's supposed to be you know uh something that's like a, a fun sport and you know but still try to take it seriously and be competitive but at the same time like just you know have a good time and then i think like as you progress like through you know, if going from middle school to high school and, and you still really like it, then you got to know that you want to, you got to put in more time and be smart and, and take care of things on and off the court to ensure that your, your performance is at its best. And then from there, just try to, you know, keep getting better and then go to, go to the next level and go to the next level and, and go from there. But I wouldn't say like focus on trying to make it pro when you're a young kid, I would just say, I would say like, look at your next step. Like, is it middle school, is it high school? And try to do whatever you can to, to be successful at that level. In terms of like your friend circle um, in the world of basketball, or do you have friends that are also outside? The reason I ask is like, I, I, like I'm an entrepreneur, I run a business, but I find sometimes explaining things in my world to people that are not in like the entrepreneurial world, but you're in the Bay Area, so it's probably like a bit different, but like just explaining like certain nuances people don't get. So similarly for you, like what is the composition of your friend circle like and do your non-basketball friends understand all the things you really have to do or the, the things that go into becoming a great basketball player? Um, well, my my friend circle is both of like like basketball and like non, non-basketball, like people I went to school with or, you know, whoever, like high school friends, things like that. Um, a lot like a lot of my high school friends were people I played basketball with. So I guess that's not a good example. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do have friends like like outside of playing basketball. But like I, I do I do have to like explain that like they've asked me to like what's the like how you asked me the process of like going international. I told you like, oh you have to do well but then find an agent and then your agent, you know, sets you up with all these deals. So like I've explained that process to them and then like like you have to work out a lot like to stay in shape and like watch your diet watch what you eat and all these sort of things and so like they understand they understand like what I'm doing and like it's not like a shock or anything to them because I guess they knew me you know playing basketball my whole life so what's the uh, Bay Area like in terms of the Tamil community and like are you is are you and like your, your family generally connected to that community or uh, like what what is it like because I know in Toronto obviously huge Tamil community a lot of yeah. you know one degree of separation everyone knows everyone what is it like in the Bay Area there are a lot of Tamils in the Bay Area um, I would say there's like there's also a lot who have recently come into the Bay Area that are working in like tech you know like Tamils from like people come from India and they'll you know Tamils will, will come and they're working for some tech companies so it's getting bigger I would say it's definitely bigger than what it was like 10 years ago but like even then it still was big and like my parents and my family like my my family's been like really active in the Tamil community like probably like when I was growing up when my sister was growing up and so like a lot of people that like were staying or grew up here were have been here for like a while like for like let's say the past like maybe 15 to 20 years we you know you're somewhat connected to them as well and so it's it's pretty cool like there's definitely a lot more Tamils here than there was like I would say 15 years ago but it's still it's still it's still actively growing is there like community events um you know like is it big enough like you know in Toronto for example it's big enough that we had a Toronto basketball like Toronto Tamil basketball league that was pretty big a lot of really good players oh really yeah that's cool uh, yeah maybe so I gotta like, maybe I gotta play and maybe I gotta I gotta get an invite to that could you could you set that up for me <laughs> I, I can ask invite? right now <laughs> the, the season the season just finished I think 
But, oh, they have uh, a full they have a full season. Yeah, yeah, it runs from like October to like like you said like April or whatever. A lot of like, oh wow, they got to act like and it's all like Tamil basketball players that play. Yeah, like they started like recently, kind of um, like there used to be a league that was just Tamil, and then it evolved. Like this other guy ended up running the new version of it that kind of mixed in people from other communities, but it's predominantly a lot of um, like Tamil players. That's cool. That's cool. Like, there's not that many Tamil players in the Bay Area, like real, like, and not that, not that many I know too. But so it's that's pretty cool that you guys have a whole league of Tamil basketball. Like, oh, it's not just it's not just basketball. It's soccer. Um, we had an ultimate frisbee league. Um, there was like a volleyball league, because like there's a ton of Tamils, but there's a ton of Tamils that love playing like sporting culture here. For Tamils, especially basketball, I think it's a big one, and then like a few other sports, is huge. So I would say like yeah. basketball is probably the number one sport for uh, Tamils here. So even like obviously wow. our generation plays, but I think the next generation even more so will That's like cool. play. Yeah. I, I got I got I got to check this out when I when I'm coming to Toronto, man. Yeah, man message me now. I will. <laughs> you know, I mean, I I don't know if there's anything running now, but I'll, I'll definitely find out. But it's it's a big, it's definitely a big culture here. Definitely, I gotta come through and just like just watch it or something. It, 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 that's that's cool. I think that's that's a cool. Uh, it's cool that you can get like that many like thumbs to be like and form your own league. Like, I think I think it's great that there's a lot of like sports participation in in that area. That's cool. Yeah, there's a couple of guys that like were really good players for like the university. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, it's it's. I'm excited for the next generation. Um, so I guess for you what's been like a failure or learning lesson that you've experienced in the last like three to five years? And like, what did you learn from that experience? Um, failure learning lesson. I guess you could say like anytime you lose a game, like a, a big important game, which, you know, obviously I've, you know, lost important games in my life, like college professionally, high, you high school for sure. Especially games where maybe you don't perform as well, you know, jump shots, not going in, you know, stuff happens, right? Like, you're going to have off days and, you know, sometimes it's going to, it's going to hurt and you guys are going to lose. But um, I think the main thing is like, like, especially, especially in basketball, like to go specifically, like if you don't play well, like, like if you're, you know, for say like Oh, for five from the field, Oh, for seven from the field, like you're supposed to have the mindset of, okay, the next shot's going in. Like, and I think for me, like the biggest thing that I've learned that I can like take to, take away from off the court and into like everyday life is that just because you're fa- you're failing so-called failing at something you know you should still be just as enthusiastic and pursuant and like a go-getter regardless of how many times you failed I think failure is just code word for like another opportunity to get better and improve and so like like I said if you're over you know seven from the field you still have to step in and shoot that eighth shot not worried about the you missed the past seven shots because if you're worried about you know what happened previously you're probably going to fail again so I think the biggest thing is like even in failure just keep pushing forward money can be hard to come by but here is a hundred dollar opportunity for you join my free newsletter for free exclusive content and a free chance to win $100 when I hold special draws. Did I mention that it's free? It, what do you think you would tell, if, you know, if you had a chance to go back in a time machine and visit your 16-year-old self? What would you tell him? 16-year-old self, man, there's a lot of things I'd tell, I'd tell that to the little Gokul, you know? <laughs> um, uh, but I would just say keep, have, keep enjoying, you know, whatever you do. Keep having fun in basketball and you know, your life and, you know, always, always try to be like the best version of yourself and and work really hard. I think that's the most important thing, you know, don't take things too seriously, you know, have a long-term outlook on, on growth and, you know, where you want to go. Don't, you know, don't be so preoccupied with something that's, you know, only, you know, three months into the future or six months. I would say that to them. And what about your personal legacy? Like looking forward, like how would you want to be remembered by your friends and family? Um, I think I don't, I've never really had that sort of like legacy aspirations or anything. I think, I mean, I think it, if you just do you, right, it's sort of those things sort of fall into place. It'll take care of itself. Um, 
just trying to be the best person you can, I guess. Well, and that, and you'll be fine. Like, I think I'm, that'll make me, you know, good in the eyes of someone one day, I guess, but I'm just going along for the ride. I get, and enjoying life and help people out whenever I can. That's a good way to segue into the final segment of the podcast. It's a segment that you are a little afraid of, but you'll be fine. It's called uh, Creator Confession. So again, Creator speak, Confession. Creator okay. Confessions, yeah. So basically, it's a bunch of statements. I'm going to, you know, I'll say something. And you just tell me the first thing that pops to mind. You ready? Okay. Is it, is it, wait, is this like a speed thing? So I have to just like go right away? Oh, and... you don't have to go right away. I mean, you can, you can think about it a little bit, but not too long. Okay. Yeah. Cause yeah. it's the first thing that comes into my mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes uh, sense. Makes sense. So first question, favorite Tamil food? Sambar Vada. Oh, hands down. That's the easiest question you've asked, man. Ooh, that is so easy. <laughs> Something that scares you. Uh, heights. Uh, insecurity you have. Um, not athletic enough. Favorite show you're watching. Favorite show I'm watching. Ted Lasso. A place you're itching to travel to. Place I'm itching to travel to. Man, I've been to a lot of places. I don't. What was I? I what was I thinking of recently? South Africa, because my sister's going there. For school or just to travel? Oh, just to travel. Just okay. to travel. Um, a fellow Tamil creator, you want to give a shout out to? A fellow, a fellow Tamil creator, man. That's a tough one. I'm gonna have to get back to you on that one. Okay. Favorite childhood memory. Favorite childhood memory. Um. Probably my birthday parties because I had all my friends. We were playing basketball and eating cake and pizza. That combination is actually really good if you haven't tried it. But you're a father of young kids, so I think you have. But I mean, I think I'll just do it as an adult. I mean, uh, yeah, I think you've had that recently. You probably have that. (laughs) That's the birthday special, but that's probably my favorite memory. All family around too. So yeah, that's awesome. Um, What's something you like to do for fun outside of work? And I I guess for you, work is in this case basketball and. uh, grad school so what is something you like to do for fun Man, something i like to do for fun Oof. so like okay this wasn't recently but like i would say like five years ago i would like me and like three of like some of my best friends we'd always play croquet like we got into croquet but like with a little mo- modified rules but like it's kind of weird because croquet is like a really old like game you know like yeah not people, it's not people in their 20s play croquet but like I really got into croquet and I thought that was that was like a hobby that me and my friends would play croquet for like three to four hours whenever we all were free or like I was back in town so that's a I guess something I guess it's the opposite of like a physically demanding basketball like you know 48 minutes of basketball right so that's true but croquet is 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 so tactical actually and it's actually really interesting but Hmm. it's like and it's like football when I explain it to people it's not just like uh people if you don't understand the intricacies of football it's you know it's yeah. like a chess game so uh, exactly exactly but maybe croquet is like that too i'll check that out exactly uh, you gotta check out croquet man i'm making you a croquet fan now <laughs> <laughs> uh what's your favorite movie of all time it can be either tamil english both man favorite movie of all time it's a tough one um I really, I always like was a big fan of the Breakfast Club, mm. like old, obviously old, but like it was a classic, a classic grown up. Um, what's something you've bought in the last few years, like something you've splurged on, but you have no regret about it? Something I splurged on, I don't. I'm trying to think, I don't, I don't know if I've like. I honestly don't think I've like splurged on like out like my splurges are like at the Nike store to be honest like basketball shoes like I'll buy like but those are useful for me so I don't know if it's a splurge but like I do I do like buying basketball shoes so I will say that's a splurge and I and I never regret buying basketball shoes so <laughs> um what's your favorite pair favorite pair are we so we're talking about right now my favorite pair of basketball shoes are like Paul George's you know what's funny I actually today just got a pair of PG6s uh, so right on cue but yeah I got Paul George 6s I got a pair of those today so those right now are like the, the shoes I'm, I'm rocking with. I might transition to Kobe's, but those are like really hard to get right now. Hmm. Pet peeve. Pet peeve. Man, what? 
like can you say like whining or pouting is a pet peeve Mm -hmm. even though it's not like i mean it is i feel like everyone doesn't like whining you know i mean some people are hate it more than others so if like that's like your thing that's a I, i would also say like in public places like what like it's very cringe to watch like people argue whether it's with like someone who like works at like a at like a business or something i think that's like that's kind of like my pet peeve i don't i don't like people who like yell at like like in in public places i think that's yeah that's probably my pet peeve Uh, a person or celebrity you look up to person or celebrity i look up to well my favorite basketball player was uh, of all time was was kobe bryant so Hmm. you know i would say i looked i definitely looked up to kobe bryant growing up if you knew that you're going to die tomorrow, a regret that you would have? Um, probably, you know, not um, meeting, more, trying to meet more people, I would say, like actively, you know, trying to socialize and, you know, and just meet a broad, diverse group of people, like from all aspects of life, I would say that's probably my, my biggest regret. A celebrity whose life you want to experience for just one day? That's a tough question. Who would I want like, for one day, though? One day only. I guess Elon Musk would be interesting to see. That guy, so many yeah. people said him as the announcer. That guy's a brilliant marketer, I guess. Yeah. Um, a book you've read or a podcast you've listened to that, that's had a positive impact on you? Um. Oh, there was one... Like I, I listened to this audio book, actually. It's called, uh, the book is called The Inner Game of Tennis. It's a pretty good one. I recommend a lot of people to read or listen to it. Uh, it's about like just achieving peak performance and like how your brain needs to tap into like an unconscious state to really be like, you know, at, at your, at, in your prime mental state. Hmm. Oh, check that out. Never heard of that. Yeah, the inner game of tennis is actually is actually a really good, uh, really good book. What's a belief, behavior, or habit that's recently improved your life? Yoga, because <laughs> my body is in is in pain after like a tough workout or something. Like always, oh, yoga or like I would say really like well, taking care of of your body, like the importance of that with like you know stretching foam rolling yoga cold tub whatever it is like you really have to you know feel good to to be able to to play well or just like not be worried about like a nagging lingering injury in whatever you do in life so i think that's been something that you know past two years i've probably focused on more and finally what's a piece of advice you'd give to your fellow aspiring tamil creators out there who um, I guess I'm a Tamil creator now. I like how you, I like how you, you phrase that, but I appreciate that. I'll take that as a, as a compliment. Thank you. Um, well, you're creating change, you know, you're, you're, you're creating like a that. prototype of what maybe my son, you know, could uh, strive for in many, many years down the line. I like, I like, I like hearing that. That's, that, that just sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> you make me sound better than, than what I actually am, but, um, a piece of advice I would give, keep, keep doing you, keep going, like never put limits on yourself, you know, just, you know, kick that door open and, and keep going. Awesome. Well, that's a good way to end off the podcast, Coco. Um, lots of good, you know, um, just, I guess, details around like, you know, if you want to get into the professional basketball world, just <laughs> obviously there's probably more details. And then obviously like all the work involved in prepping and kind of getting ready to be successful on the court with we talked about like some of the eating, training, all that good stuff. So I think people enjoy the podcast um, or the episode for somebody listening that's, you know, inspired and, you know, maybe wants to connect with you. Uh, maybe the next Gokal, right? Uh, Gokal. Um, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? Uh, best way to reach out? Usually like probably... Um... I'm not really on social media too much, but I would say probably Instagram is, is mm-hmm. what like I check the most. Not really on Facebook, but yeah, I would say probably Instagram. Awesome. Well, I mean, appreciate you sharing and dropping some knowledge. 
for those of you listening. Appreciate you guys as, as always. And on to the next episode. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it.